Hey, good morning, guys. Well, it's morning time here when I'm shooting this anyway. Um, taking the last of the baby quail that just hatched out to the brooder box. I got a little bit of a story to tell you today and how I got very, very lucky. So I got five little baby birds in here. Here, let's grab one of them out here. We'll show you. Now, nah, maybe I better not do that. I may drop him and the dog will get him, but uh, there we go. There's one, one little baby bird. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. One of them. I got about five in here, about 40 in the uh, brooder box. Well, 35 in the brooder box, I think it is. And uh, I'm going to go add these guys to it. All right, so I've got the uh, whole plastic brooder boxes set up because, well, hang on, let me get the lid off because I tried brooding them in this bigger brooder box, but you know, once they get to be about a week and a half old, they start flying around really good and then get out of here pretty easily. So let me get these little guys added to it and then we'll go from there. You'll notice I've got two brooder boxes set up. That's just because I have two brooder boxes. So it'll be easy when it comes time to clean one, I just move the birds over to the other one clean this one out and I can just move them back and forth. It'd be a lot easier than trying to clean them out. Lights just went off because it's up to temp. So I've got my uh, Inkbird uh, temperature sensor here, runs the heat lamps, keeps, uh, keeps track of the temperature and if it gets you know, below about 95, it kicks the light on, brings it back up to 100 degrees. So it kicks on and off. It's summertime here right now. so. It's going to get up to 90 degrees and with the door closed and it's probably not going to run much today. Uh, it'll, it'll stay plenty warm enough. Let me uh, step out of this brooder box so I can talk to you a little bit. All right, that's a little bit better. Uh, it's a little crowded in there. And uh, I'll take you in there here in just a minute. We'll show you what the baby quail look like, give you a, a glimpse of them. Didn't have a fantastic hatch rate, but it wasn't bad. I think I set 60 eggs and I got 45 hatched. So that's not too bad. That's pretty decent, especially considering my birds that the eggs are coming from are about two years old. So, you know, after, I mean, the, the fertility starts to drop a little bit the older the birds get. So really, I wasn't bad considering all that. Um, here's the issue I had, and I did lose a couple of birds in the brooder box because I have the heat lamps plugged into an extension cord. I had them plugged in up on my uh, deck on the outside plug. That's always worked just fantastic. Well, we had a storm come through uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. Uh, first day I put them in there. Uh, the first ones that hatched out went into the brooder box. I plugged it all in, no problem. Storm came through and uh, it <laughs> didn't knock out power to my house, but apparently it got water in that. Here, hang on. Max, get out of there. Go on. You're too interested in those. Go on. Go. There you go. Good boy. Sorry, I had to get the dog under control before he jumps in the brooder box with him. Uh, where was I going with that? Okay, so I had the, uh, the, the extension cord plugged in on the outside uh, plug on my deck which has always worked just fine, no problems whatsoever. But the storm came through, didn't knock out power, so I didn't think anything about it, but apparently it got water inside the, uh, the plug. Max, get out of there. He can't hardly help himself. And uh, it kicked off my ground fault, and I didn't even know it kicked off the ground fault, which means there was no power out here to these guys so there was no heat lamp running all night long. And I didn't even realize it until the next day when I came out here. Um, and I, it was 75 degrees in here. Uh, whenever I actually got it all rigged up, I ended up running it through the window in the bathroom and I couldn't keep the ground fault on. I, I found the ground fault that kicked off, turned it back on, and it kept kicking off. So I figured, well, that means there's probably moisture in the receptacle and the plug. Um, so I ended up running it through the bathroom window plugging it in in an inside plug that had power, no problems, everything's working. But whenever I got these heat lamps kicked on, it was 75 degrees in there, and it had been 75 degrees probably all night long. I mean, I don't know when it, when it kicked off, but the storm came through, you know, eight o'clock uh, the night before. So, uh, you know, probably since about that time, since about eight o'clock at night to, it was 7.30 in the morning uh, whenever I figured that out. So, you know, you're looking at almost 12 hours with no heat on these guys. I only lost two birds. I had two young ones that, uh, or two baby. I mean, they're all young. Two babies that uh, ended up dying. Uh, they were all huddled together when I came out in the morning, just 
you know, trying to stay warm. And I didn't end up losing two, but only two. The rest of them made it just fine. I had a couple that looked like they weren't going to make it, but once I got the heat back on, they perked back up, no problems whatsoever. So I got incredibly lucky. I've never had that issue before with, uh, you know, water getting in there, kicking it off, any of those kinds of things. Just goes to show it's something you got to keep an eye on. I should have come out and checked it after the storm passed. I just didn't even think about it. It's just never been an issue, so I never thought about it before. But, uh, yeah, you live and you learn, so now I know better. Let's see if we can uh, take a look at these baby birds that are in the brooder box. I'm going to give it a minute for the uh, heat lamp to kick back on so it'll give us some light to see them, and then uh, we'll just take a look at them. All right, so the heat lamp just kicked back on, and there you can see, and they're looking pretty good. They're all spread out, so they're perfectly warm, no problems whatsoever. Whole bunch of little baby quail. Go, 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 move, move. That's where he loves the birds. Well, you know, like I said, I got really, really lucky. That could have been so much worse. I could have lost every single one of them. I was a little worried I did whenever I figured out that the power was out. And uh, I was afraid I was gonna open up that door and find just a box full of dead baby birds. But no, they seem to be doing all right. Get the rabbits fed here real quick. Hey guys, good morning. How's it going? Hungry? There you go, there's some food. How about you? Man, I've been cleaning up all your pellets. Still got water. Still good. Well, not much going on with the rabbits right now. Summertime, it's just hot. So I just give them a break. They kind of slow down a little bit. They're not eating quite as much as they were during the winter time. But they're doing fine, uh, no issues. They don't do much but lay around all day anyway. And uh, I try not to pester them too much when the, uh, when the heat of the day is on, just let them go. So anyway, um, like I said, got really lucky with those baby birds. They didn't die, I was kind of surprised on that. Down to 75 degrees for 12 hours, just newly hatched right out of the incubator. I, I'm really surprised that they handled it that well. Um, but they did just fine. So uh, I don't know, that gives me kind of a, uh, you know, it's the first time I've ever, I've never tried that before. I've always kept them at 100 degrees, you know, for the first couple of days. So that makes me think, you know, maybe they can be a little bit more tolerant of, you know, reducing the temperature a little bit, a little bit sooner. Usually what I do is I keep them at about 100 degrees and I try to keep it that way for about, you know, until they start feathering out about two weeks and then I start reducing the heat. And I usually have them off by about three weeks off the heat completely in the summertime anyway, when it's getting warm. So. You know, I don't guess there's a big change to that necessarily, but maybe I can start reducing the heat, you know, in the first week before they even start feathering out. Maybe I can get it down to 80 degrees and keep them at 80 degrees and start weaning them off a little bit sooner. I don't know, it's just a thought. Um, they did handle the 75 degree temperature just fine. Um, they were, like I said, they were huddled together and I ended up losing two birds, but uh, I mean, it was definitely too chilly for them. But, uh, they did better than I expected them to. Anyway, I thought I'd share that story with you guys today, just a short little video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, God bless.